Hello and welcome to the third video in this series programming HS Engine in JavaScript. So in this video, after the board representation introduction in the last video, we can finally start getting on with some code. The first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to go do, go to jQuery.com if you're not familiar already with jQuery. And we're going to click on this download link here for jQuery. And then you can download here the compressed production version I downloaded. I think I had version 10.1. This is now version 10.2. It doesn't matter. But just download this file and then you need to save it into the project directory. And the way I've structured the project is I've got a project folder with just index.html in it and a folder called JS which will contain the JavaScript files. You can ignore video code.txt. That's just what I'm using in this video uh, to put in the code that I've prepared earlier. And inside the folder JS, I've created a main.js, a defs.js, and I've also saved the jQuery file that I downloaded. So you need jQuery, otherwise things aren't going to work, and you just need to save it in the folder there. So now that you've done that, we can move these two away, and we can start actually preparing the code. To start with, we're going to be working almost purely with the JavaScript console to get the engine up and running and working, and we're going to be adding in the GUI last. But we need some kind of little website to start with, so I'm going to create here very quickly just a as simple as possible site with a text box and a button, and more importantly, the links for the JavaScript. Now in the header, I've got the title JS chess and there's just a little line in the header which is in there to allow the word console, keyword console to be used in Internet Explorer versions 9 and before. I found out through doing this project the other week that uh, it doesn't, uh, that Internet Explorer 9 and versions earlier doesn't support the console keyword, so logging to the console in JavaScript. I'm sure if you use a lot of JavaScript you'll have known this already but I didn't because I'm not particularly experienced with JavaScript and so this is added in at the top just to allow the console log function to be used. And then the rest of the body isn't very spectacular. I'm simply putting in, as I said, a text box and a button. And you can download this code and paste it in yourself. But more critical, the critical bit is at the bottom here where we've got the includes in the JS folder for the jQuery, the defs and the main. And all being well, if you go to your browser and make sure you turn on the JavaScript console as well. I'm just going to lift this a bit and then refresh. You should get something looking like this. We'll do the styling later on to make this input box wider. And going into elements, it should also have found OK and not report any errors of not finding your resources here, the jQuery, defs, main JS, or anything like that. OK, good. So that's that first little part done. Now we can start actually making sure things are working OK. So just go into the main and we're going to put in a function here just to make sure jQuery is working inside main, which is the, I'm not going to, it's not a jQuery tutorial or anything this, it's just a building a chess engine in JavaScript. But if you use this shortcut here, this is jQuery shortcut for the document, and simply going to, when this is called in this manner, it's asking, it's called when the document is ready. So if jQuery is working, then this should print OK. This should then be able to print to the console. So I'm just going to put here console.log and I'll just put main and I'll call init called because we're going to be calling initialization function. And then below this function here, I'm just going to put in function init. And in here later on we're going to put all our initialization code of constants and things that, or variables we need to initialize for the program to actually run. And I'll just put console.log init called. I'm a big fan of logging almost everything in programs so I know what's going on particularly at the start, especially with the chess program as you'll see. So we have our init function and then we can already inside our main call our initialization function as I said or our initialization we'll put it inside here. So I'm just going to quickly go back to the browser and just refresh and double check that we get something to the console and we do init called main init called. Good so jQuery is working and like I said this should be printed out to your console if it's not then there's something that's a little bit wrong. 
So now let's go into defs.js and this in the next video we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, copying pasting some definitions into defs.h which will form the definitions for the program. The first definition I'm going to put at the top is the definition for the pieces and I'm aware that that's a bit wide so I'm going to put an enter in here so it goes a bit further down. And this is simply of course defining the pieces as integer constants. Well it would have been constants but I don't think Internet Explorer versions 10 and before even support the const keyword in Java so I'd like to use const here but I can't so I've used var and this is basically uh, we could in the program itself simply use a 1 to represent a pawn or a naught to represent an empty but I really like using uh, constant names for these and doing this means we can say pieces dot empty whenever we want to know something in the program rather than simply typing naught like this because when it comes to debugging the program or changing things later I think it's far easier to read something like this than it is just to find where the zero is in the program and this is a common theme for things I'll be doing all the way through all the way through the program I like to use named constants rather than hard coding the numbers in and our pieces are simply empty as zero and then we've got white pawn white knight bishop rook queen king and then black pawn up to black king going from one to twelve so if we want to say if it's a black king we would simply say if x equals and then piece it whoops pieces dot black king in this way which like i said is a lot cleaner than if x equals twelve Okay, so that's it then for the piece definitions. The next and most important definition is to define the number of squares on the board for when we're doing our loops and things. I like to store that as well in a named, like as a constant, even though it's a var. And we'll call that board square number. And if you've been through my series in the, of the C program, the C engine, chess engine, you'll be recognizing a lot of these defs as being almost verbatim repeats from the C engine. And then, like I said in the last video, we need to define our files and our ranks. And that's done in this manner here. And again, I'll just make this a little bit more visible on the screen by doing this. So we have file A, file B, and so on, going up to file none, going from 0 to file A and 7 to file H, because remember, all indexing is zero-based indexing and then rank 1 is 0 up to rank 8 which is a 7 and again just to reiterate and labor the point that allows us to do this rather than saying 7 for example it's a much cleaner I find to do this when I'm referring to the ranks rather than hard code the number in particularly when debugging so I'm sorry if you find this too much code or you don't like doing these things this way but that's the way it'll be the next thing I want to drop in is I want to drop into the definitions the colors so white is 0 black is 1 and both is 2 and having white as 0 and black is 1 is really convenient if we want to change the side say we have a side variable and we want to flip the side we simply have to do this to flip the side exclusive or with 1 because if you exclusive or 0 with a 1 you get a 1 if you exclusive or a 1 with a 1 you get a 0 so we can simply flip the side in that manner and an even shorter version of writing it is to do this so it's quite convenient to have white 0 and black 1 and it's also convenient for array indexing as well and the last couple of definitions for this video because I don't like the videos being too long is we're going to define some key squares and we're going to define boolean so some key squares are simply the first rank so a to h and the eighth rank from a8 to h8 and you'll remember those from the previous video where we had the spreadsheet here where we've got 21 to 28 for the rank 1 and 91 to 98 for the eighth rank and here we've got the 21 to 28 and the 91 to 98 and we'll define no square as 99 and our off board will be defined as 100 and here's something else I like to do I like to have a true and false even though they don't exist in JavaScript per se and I'm simply going to call false 0 and true 1 so that we can do again the 
bool dot false like this rather than having a zero or a one and again if it's not really your style to do it like this I'm sorry I'm not um, a 10 years experienced JavaScript programmer and I just find this easiest way to do things that I'd rather have I like to have words describing my constants rather than the hard-coded numbers themselves okay then that's it for this video that's not really anything any program we've just made sure that jQuery is working called our initialization we've defined some of our main constants for the program and the next video we're actually going to start setting up some arrays that contain our files and ranks which we'll use as reference later on in the engine. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.